Good morning, church. Welcome to worship on this All Saints Sunday, November 1st, 2020. It is wonderful to be with you this day, wherever you are and whenever you watch, we are blessed by your presence. Before we begin, I have just two announcements. First, that next Sunday is Harvest Sunday. And Harvest Sunday is going to be a little bit different this year as we ask you to not bring in food or fruits or cane or anything else like that. There will not be an auction next year, but we will, or next week, but we will have a special guest preacher next Sunday as we will welcome the Reverend Kurt Hutchins, who will be representing an organization called Food for the Poor, with whom we are building houses in Jamaica West Indies. The last announcement is my sad announcement, and that is that next Sunday, Harvest Sunday, will be the final worship service here in the church building until Ash Wednesday at the earliest. For more information on that, you can check out last Wednesday's online devotional, or you can read the script, which can be found on the church website on the downloads page. With that, Let's, uh, let's pray our way into worship this All Saints Sunday. Let us pray. Faithful Redeemer, Holy God, you are the beginning and the ending of all things. You promise to wipe away every tear. You promise that death and mourning will be no more. You promise that you will make your home among us and abide with us as our God. Teach us, Lord. Teach us this day. Be with us this day as we gather to live as the saints you call us to be, that we may truly be your people, here, there, and everywhere, living and doing your will in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. We continue our worship this morning with our opening hymn, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, open my eyes, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you.
eyes and my heart. Holy, 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 you are holy, holy, holy. Good morning, church. This morning's lesson comes to us from the letter of 1 John, reading from the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when He is revealed, we will be like Him for we will see him as he is. And all who have had this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Here ends the lesson. This morning's gospel lesson comes to us from the gospel according to St. Matthew, reading from the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here ends this morning's Gospel lesson. Our Gospel reading from this morning made headlines back in June. In a wake of protests and uprisings and unrest, police and the National Guard stormed a peaceful protest so that President Donald Trump could take photos holding a Bible in front of a church. After that, Governor Cuomo read from this fifth chapter of Matthew and said, Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. When Governor Cuomo read this text, he was not commanding President Donald Trump to be a peacemaker, although that would be quite nice, wouldn't it? He read it to serve as a reminder. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Cuomo was reminding those already doing the work, those that were sitting peacefully until tear gas was thrown at them, they will be called children of God. The line Como read and this passage from this morning are commonly known as the Beatitudes. It is the very beginning of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus starts his whole entire sermon this way for the next two entire chapters in Matthew. And he starts them with the words, 
Blessed are. And he repeats those two words over and over. Blessed are. But what does blessed really mean? We hear that word a lot in church and we know of blessings, but this phrase Jesus uses differs from a car and house blessings that Pastor Bob and I do. In those cases, when we perform as pastors a blessing, it's often done for peace of mind, for comfort, for safety. But when Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, he is giving us a different type of blessing. A better translation of this word would be satisfied or happy or content. Satisfied are those in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Satisfied are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Satisfied are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Satisfied are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Does using the word satisfied change the meaning just a little bit? When Jesus says those words, the blessing is not something to achieve, but something that is already done. Jesus is not saying to be more meek, to be more peaceful. Jesus is making an announcement. We hear the announcement and want to accept the blessing, but we are unsatisfied. Those who mourn often go, uncomforted. Those who strive for justice take that longing to the grave. When Jesus spoke these words, he was not saying try hard to live like this because there's a reward at the end. He did not say be poor in spirit and then you will get into heaven. He did not say you will see God once you are pure in heart. He did not say to be a peacemaker, you must be called a child of God. Jesus spoke these words to those that were already under these categories. Those that are poor in spirit, meaning those that doubt, those that are down on their luck, that doubt themselves. Those that mourn, meaning the people who have lost a parent, a brother, a sister, a child, a dream job. Those who have been derived from joy. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. These aren't the people holding guns at courthouses, demanding to not wear masks. No, these are the victims of injustice. The people who ask for their children's names to be said after they are killed by police. The people that have been shut down and ignored. When Jesus says those who are meek, those are the people who keep their eyes cast down, those who get stepped on, those who don't count and don't get counted. The people who have been told to be docile and that their needs do not matter. The people who are the peacemakers are not the ones that moderate or avoid conflict. They're the people who put their reputations and lives on the line for injustice. The people that put themselves directly in harm's way, standing between nations warring groups, or even torn families. They intervene. And we all fall under these categories at one point or another. We all are not satisfied, whether that is with ourselves, with our country, or with our families. 
in a time when the law was laid out by the religious authorities, these blessings were a radical representation of God's promises. These eight statements are proclaiming the good news. It is not advice to be followed in order to get to a certain point, in order to get into heaven, in order to receive God's love and grace. Jesus is proclaiming that those that are poor in spirit right now, this very second, that the kingdom of heaven will be theirs, that they will be satisfied. On All Saints Sunday today, we remember those that have gone before us. We, the ones that are left here, are those who mourn. In a year filled with grief, many of us are or have been in places where we do not expect to find Jesus. Those that have traveled through grief know it all too well. You know of losing a job and not knowing when you will receive your next paycheck. You know of not being able to visit a loved one in a hospital. You know of only having a graveside service and knowing that this is not how you envisioned your loved one's funeral. And you know of the longing and the heartache for how things used to be. These are the places where we might have felt alone, angry, unsatisfied, and even abandoned by God. Yet Jesus meets us in those places already here on this earth. Jesus is presenting a new world to us. These are the promises given to us through Jesus Christ. The blessings laid out to us in the Beatitudes are not wishful thinking, but are declarations of who Jesus has come to help. They are announcements of where the Lord will be and of the times he will be with us when we need him the most, the times when we are unsatisfied. Jesus is saying, this is where you can find me from this point forward. This is where I'll be bringing a blessing where no one expects to find it. Jesus meets us and carries the promise of the kingdom of the resurrection, and of the everlasting life. The Beatitudes connect this life and the next, and with it our hope that one day the two will be joined and we can be reunited again with those we love. God's promised future has already come to us in the form of Jesus Christ, and God's love and grace have been revealed to us through him and the many other saints that have come before. We are connected beyond time and place, beyond life and death. It is our duty to live out God's promised kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, equipped with the love and strength of those who have gone before we can be fully satisfied and accept Jesus' blessing, knowing that God will be with us through the challenges, the trials, and the tribulations. And we know this because Jesus says, blessed are you, satisfied are you here and now. Amen.
My friends, let us now pray together for ourselves, for our world, and for our church. The response after I say, Lord, in your mercy is, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, on this day that we remember the saints of our lives, along with those who were not so saintly, help us remember that all are covered by your promises and all gather with us this day, a great cloud of witnesses as we remember them before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, on this week when our nation elects a president, we pray for wisdom, we pray for calm, we pray for patience, and we pray that the divisions and the walls might come crumbling down and that we might truly be again one nation under God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, on this day, this All Saints Sunday, we lift before you those who have been remembered by members and friends of this church family as we say their names before you this day. Joan Campbell, Charles and Margaret Ganetz, and Pamela Hoff, remembered by Dolores Ganetz, Sukraj Tulsi, and Dana Tulsi, remembered by Amy, Kieran, Davy, and Ethan Tulsi. Irene, Sam, Harold, and Cecil Ramdas, remembered by the Tulsi family. Clarice Hussein's son, Feroz, and her parents. Hector Lorenzo, remembered by Yolanda Powers. Mohani Sankar's husband, Rudy Sankar. Irene Jagdar's parents, the Reverend and Mrs. Paul Jagdar, and all the loved ones in the Jagdar family. John N. Mitchell Sr., Charlie Mitchell Sr., both remembered by Sadal and Umadai Mitchell. Powell and Terry, remembered by Chan Prasad. Crescenzio and Mary Lou Bulaong, remembered by Arvin Gale and Ian Bulaong. Facundo and Vestacion Gakula, remembered by Luke Cavadin. James Lindy, remembered by Bert Lindy. Peter Artiga, remembered by Anita Lindy. Cynthia Chan's aunt, Esther Chan her grandmother, Iris Tiloki, and her grandparents, Neville and Marceline Chan. Samuel Ramjitan Sr., May Mandel, and Abraham Rasul Mandel, all remembered by Evelyn Mandel. Mary Bart, remembered by Rhea Prasad. The Reverend Dr. Michael Whalen, remembered by myself and Cynthia Chambers. Layla Angana Singh, remembered by the Rangasamy family. Leslie and Sabita Guthrie and Cheryl Joquim, remembered by John and Nadia De Fritas. David Kahn, remembered by Lauren Tobin Puente. All the loved ones in the life of Yvette Lochen Singh and her family. Carolyn Brown's parents, Deacon James Baker and Deaconess Louise Baker. Inez Hodge and Agnes Bunton, remembered by Angela Haywood. Scott Michael and Hector Rivera, remembered by Christina Hudu. George Jandu, remembered by the Lung and Jandu families. Cecil Scott Sr and Mr. and Mrs. Robert Brown and their son, remembered by Cynthia Scott. Stephen John and all the loved ones, remembered by Joyce John and her family. Alfonso Brown, Jane and Simon Johnson, who are remembered by Lynette Brown and her family. Chinapin Candesami, remembered by Glory and Mary Candesami, 
and Nirmal Harichan. Claude, Nesha, and Jean Thomas, remembered by Brian Thomas. Lillian and Walter Bascom, and Desiree Bahadur, remembered by Lindsay and Catherine Bascom. Joan Campbell, remembered by Sybil Dow. Babsy and Sukraj Harbajan, remembered by Keisha Harbajan. Pamela Haynes and Maurice Hogger, remembered by Michelle Scott. Patrick Glasgow and James Johnson, remembered by Sharon Glasgow. Sabita and Leslie Guthrie, Cheryl Joquin and Sukri and Filbert Peters, all remembered by Terry and Elaine Guthrie. Harold Duncan and Jay Throwbridge Johnson, remembered by Dayton Duncan. Neville Iria and his siblings, remembered by Mary Iria and her family. Srimati Juram and Andrew Ishak, remembered by Dennis Ishak and his family. All the loved ones in the life of Beatrice and Paul Ramraj. Totoram and Ellen Mangel, remembered by Gurley Mangel. Joan Campbell, who is remembered by the Sisters of Our Savior. Kenneth Durgana and Mona Durgana, remembered by Shira and Clifford Durgana. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, on this month, as we prepare to close the church doors once again, we pray that we might be proven wrong, that the case numbers might tumble, that no more lives might be lost, that the second surge might be an illusion. We pray, Lord, that you might wave an almighty hand and make this bad dream go away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, look with love on our sorrows. Comfort us with your goodness. Give us peace in our mourning. These things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we continue with our closing hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
and now receive God's benediction. Go out into the world and labor to bring forth new life. Dream dreams, pursue visions, and speak of God's goodness in the words of those who would hear. May the God who breathes life into creation be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to your dreaming. And may the Holy Spirit, our advocate and our supporter, set your hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, may you have a blessed week. We'll see you all next Sunday as well as Wednesday night for devotions. Be blessed and don't forget to vote. Amen. Thank you.